Thank you so much, Pierce, and welcome to our friends in Paris, Marilyn and Karthika, uh, who are the authors of this uh, fabulous new book, A Different Distance, uh, Ranga. I would note that this is the, uh, the second uh, uh, Ranga written in Paris uh, by prominent writers in 1968, Octavio Paz, Jacques Roubaix, Eduardo Sanguinetti, and Charles Tomlinson uh, housed themselves in a hotel basement for five days and wrote uh, their uh, Ranga, uh, fabulous book they put together. But this book, uh, which begins on uh, March 29th, uh, 2020, and concludes one year later, is a kind of not only a, a Ranga, but a record of the dislocation and the complications of our uh, daily lives under lockdown. Uh, the poets will tell are going to read some, then we'll have some conversation, we'll open it up to questions from the audience. I encourage you to put those questions mm -hmm. into the Q&A or into the chat. Mm -hmm. And uh, before I sign off, I just want to say that uh, this book, uh, Marilyn is an old, longtime friend. Uh, Karthika is a writer I've known on the page for so many years and to see them together after so many, uh, after so such a long time apart uh, is, is quite exciting. And for me, I just would note that uh, the book begins on my mother's birthday and she had passed away precisely a month before uh, on leap day in February 29th. Uh, so as soon as I began to read this, I found myself in uh, a world of grief and, and celebration in its way. And I'm profoundly grateful to Marilyn and Karthika for taking me on this journey, which I know the audience and all the readers who come to this book in the years, to, in the years ahead of us uh, will feel that same sense of love and enveloping uh, celebration. Celebration. Marilyn Karthika. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you so much. Um, maybe we begin with a little reading and that will plunge us into what we were trying to do. <laughs> um, I think uh, uh, we'll start from with a, a chain. And uh, incidentally, Christopher, I did. The, the, the Renga I wrote with Dima Shahabi, I was in Paris, so that's, a, that, that, that's yet another one. And, D, and uh, uh, Dima was in California, where she still is. <laughs> um, um, Rose Garden, hidden in the Square du, du Grand Veneur, it's starting to bud, but the gates are locked. Only kids from the logements sociaux in the enclosure peer through the grates in strange, bright, eyeful sunlight. Here's a petition against euthanizing the sick old. Sick and old, for law and self. Teens from block B. I now tick both boxes. Um, though, no longer haze me with nod and smile. Chemo shorn, browless beings in masks could spell one more germ. 6th April 2020. One more spell, one more incantation. It's only the art of the fugue or Hildegard of Bingen or Alice Coltrane, music calms anxiety. Abida Parvin sings a Hafez Chazel, cross-legged, eloquent hands. I pick out a word or two, 6th April, 2020. Two words now for me, Hamde Kenge, we shall see. Iqbal Bano soars skyward on Fez's refrain, and something steelier than hope lights the heart once more, heart that fluttered last evening, stalled a few instants. A frog in the throat these days hearkens to beasts less winsome. 9th April 2020. 
20. Ego, clawing beast, with or without our selfhood, beasts try to survive, as does each isolate I, newly dispensable or in the equation. Lock up these, those forever, then open the doors. I open late windows on unnatural bright April. 10th April, 2020. Bright as this April. Isa, flushed after cycling from Pontin, risking dour fines we none can afford, brings me Doreyaki, homemade, with sweet red beans crushed and flour ground by Nico, who'd foraged for weeks. Balm for my bile deluged gut, swaddling for sleep deprived greens. Wajdi Muad writes to his infant unknowing son, Quoi dire de plus urgent que l'amour? Sometimes, pancakes will do just as well. 13th April, 2020. Pancakes, not huitre. Phone calls, texts, instead of wine flavored exchanges in the public privacy of a cafe. Sauteed snow peas, shallots, chicken, wine anyway, but for one, yesterday's bread, a departing moon above roof doors, now my horizon, 14th April, 2020. My horizon each week. The poppy printed teal hair cap of nurse rose, hand stitched. The florets for cheer as she disinfects, secures in the martial chant so dear to our president, my border cat site. She of calm hands and raptor gaze snags any truant wane. 15th April, 2020. I play truant when I go to the bakery or Russian roulette for a baguette tradition. Une réglette de macaron. I should be indoors. Back inside, I'm dizzy with fear, but I eat one, two caramel macaroons. Look, we have come through. Who knows? 15th April, 2020. Who knows anything today? Prefects, priests, pressmen, physicians, no one. Yet wait, everyone we know or don't, dons shadows, shades of prophet. Sun-drenched flowed the Quai de Valmy and the Gemma these last afternoons, while I brooded indoors with Coke as cure and company, 18th April, 2020. Wolves accompany me, a dream I'd like to have, lope across a step, Howl an ode to the half moon, break bread with Alfara's deck, hunt mice if we must, overarching the night sky blankets. We're inured in or opens it up to hazels of rain. If just for a rainbow while, Ghalib, Fez, Firak, Sahir, always Sahir, then the Dwayan, Khushro, Sufi, secular, or plain Kafir, their Khazal, Nazam, and Sher, the first to strike my early unlearned years, demand rebellion, yet earn adoration from a resolute, Gnostic heart. 20th April 2020. Should we stop there? Hello? 
Yeah, where you're, sometimes we it freezes just a little bit, but that was uh, absolutely beautiful. I wonder if, uh, before we go on to the next uh, reading, if you could tell us a little bit about your, uh, about the Ranga tradition, about your, your ways of proceeding, um, and what sparked the, uh, the original inspiration to uh, write this during the, during the pandemic. Um, well, I the I, I actually suggested to Karthika via email uh, that we do this uh, because uh, both of us uh, had in fact have in fact done collaborative work before the book that I did with Dima and a wonderful book about the Paris Metro that uh, uh, Karthika wrote with Sunila Chatterjee uh, who was in India. Uh, uh, with some, sorry, some point it with some point of strategy. I have a friend named yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, um, So uh, it was doing something like this uh, was not strange to either of us. And then, of course, Karthika's work in uh, theater and dance is always collaboration, collaboration collaboration uh, and it's that we were both um, so uh, I think uh, I had always I had not always but for quite a while wanted to collaborate with Kartika on something uh, because uh, uh, um, uh, be, be, because, uh, excuse me uh, uh, because of the work because of the work she'd done with Samparna because the wonderful uh, work in her book Until the Lions uh, that uses uh, a the myriad uh, different kinds of um, poetic uh, po uh, received and invented poems, so that I, um, I it it seemed it seemed it, it seemed to, to us both that uh, working with something like the Rango would both uh, because be, because of its history of, of being collaboration and because we both like um, working with. Uh, constraints that are not constraints um, and uh, seem possible formally speaking you you obey the the strictures of yeah the and, and you know uh, uh, we would, yeah, uh, no, it was it was wonderful to have you know that structure and and the units uh, to um, to kind of um, shape thought as it were, as well as the idea of uh, of course of uh, picking up a word from the last line uh, and and perhaps uh, perhaps you know more about I mean I know you know more about this than I do that the uh, uh, it would be that it would be done differently in Japanese but. Uh, Picking up a word from the last line and using it, and sometimes the words in one language and one person's like that. Uh, I had to ask Kartika what Nastik meant, and it means atheist, and so that was just fine for, <laughs> uh, for, for, the, for the next one. I think. I think. <laughs> and, and can, um, you, can you talk a little bit about the the different kinds of pleasures that come from writing? Uh, on one's own and then writing in collaboration. And you both have extensive experience in collaborating, but what, what is the special joy that collaboration brings? I think we may have frozen here. Um, when it's uh, rich and exciting. Can you, can you hear us? Uh, now we can, and it occurs to me it might be useful for you to turn off your video can, for uh, while you're trying to you speak. Uh, it's lagging right now. Uh, yeah. yeah, you've uh, frozen. Uh, no? Yeah, so I, I, I wonder if you could turn off your yeah. video so we get a little more, uh, we might be able to get more of the audio. Frozen. 
I have. Uh, we did. I have uh, turned off video. Can you hear yes. us now? Now yeah, we can okay. hear you. Yep. Yep. Oh, super. Yep. Super. So let's do that. Um, yeah. No. Um, I think collaboration, when it's you know rich and exciting, um, is is really about being the sum more than the sum of the parts, and and that is inherent to so much of um, the work I've been fortunate to do with dance and stage, um, and in this case, you know, Marilyn inviting me to write. Was, uh, as I was telling a friend the other day, is is, a, is is was sort of a gift from the cosmos to be able to write with one's literary hero is a, is a rare and wonderful thing. And I've learned so much reading Marilyn um, from the time I started writing poetry. The 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 wealth of forms that she just deploys with such you know mastery. Um, yes, so it was like in a, in a way it was also like having a masterclass in real time. Uh well, I well, I I think after and I had you know, read an, an, until the lines before we started doing this. So I I, I think that uh, uh, Carter, it's understatement for Carter not to uh, not to admit that she's a master of all kinds of poetic forms herself, as well as uh, uh, somebody comfortable in three languages. And um, uh, I, I think of, uh, also uh, that um, although it's not a shared experience, the fact that both of us were on one hand isolated the way we the, the way we all were in, in, in forced isolation and uh, uh, inshallah we won't be again uh, but, um, uh, but at the same time at the same time in contact with people in various different even even if, if only by email or whatsapp uh, with pe with people in different parts of the world and not not the same parts of the world as each other uh, uh, that's, of course uh, uh, I think also added to the opening out um, of the writing experience uh, even though each of us was stuck in her own small flat and, and uh, we you know, weren't even seeing each other. What's wonderful is is the invocation yes. of these um, names and places I mean, from abroad. I think I do have to qualify solitude, though. That, um, but I'd also actually never been so surrounded by uh in in a very physical sense because. My entire, you know, support system um, bolstered around to take me to hospital, to bring me back, to do my chores. There were friends who stayed on in Paris just to ensure that we had that little immunity bubble. Uh, so there was both actually reinforced presence, which is which is quite an irony, given that you know it was a pandemic and we were forced to isolate, um, and uh, a, a, a very different kind of a solitude because I was cut off from. The ordinary, uh, the ordinary, as in the everyday networks of performance, and my company, and the people with whom I usually spent a lot of time on the road. Um, uh, whereas, in um, in fact, many of the people that I normally uh, see, I mean, who normally live right here, uh, manage to uh, get out of town. Uh, you know, go to go to a relative in the country, go to their own house in the country, and we're suddenly uh, just not there at all. Fortunately, not everybody. Um, uh, Can you hear us? Is it okay? Now we can, yeah. Um, uh, there's a quite a touching moment, Marilyn, when you're remembering a last coffee with your favorite student in Beirut, uh, just before she sets off for the, the mountains to uh, have have her locked down there. Yeah, in uh, in fact, at the beginning, just before the beginning of our lockdown, I I was on. Probably, I think the, the third from the last plane back from Beirut to Paris. Uh, so um, this was uh, 
I, I just landed, put my feet on the ground, and then uh, as suddenly the, there was no more ground beneath my feet. Um, I you know, never, uh, and, uh, and also felt a little bit as if, well, uh, I know I'm not. A, I know I'm not a refugee. It's not anything like the experience of refugees. But suddenly, packing up everything in one duffel bag and getting on the getting on the plane from Beirut as fast uh, back to Paris as fast as possible was um, very interesting. I was thinking of that. Uh, I just finished reading. Rab Rab Last novel about the uh, is it is it okay? Is the connection okay? Well, we lost just about everything Marilyn said there. The last thing we heard was you, she was just reading a novel and I, we didn't hear anything after that. So maybe you could repeat that. Uh, by, uh, by Rabia Alamedin, uh, 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 um, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which is about a Lebanese American doctor who also happens to be trans, uh, working going going to Moria on Lesbos and working uh, in, the, uh, in the refugee camps, and uh, it see it's it uh, it's he's a, he's a wonderful writer. It's a, uh, it's one of his best books, but it also uh, seems like a particularly appropriate thing to be reading. <laughs> Uh, but um, I, I want to pass on a, a wonderful comment from Jessica Greenbaum about the technical issues we're having. Please don't worry. This is how we hear things now. And I think that in, <laughs> in lockdown, we do hear things differently. Uh, I also wanted to call attention to something that Karthika uh, mentioned just a, a little bit earlier. In, the book ends with about eight pages of uh, acknowledgments and debts of gratitude to all the, the people around her in her life who made uh, made this uh, made it possible to distill the essence of those days into these marvelous uh, rangas. And I, and I also wanted to talk about the fact that that clearly back of uh, back of this book we have two poets in different generations, both of whom have faced uh, incalculable uh, physical uh, challenges, uh, disease, and the like. Uh, and yet it seems to me that there's a kind of light that gets cast on these daily challenges of trying to stay alive in lockdown. And I wonder if the, in the act of writing uh, in, re, in response to each other and being in conversation with each other, that didn't make the the daily burden of trying to stay alive a bit oh, easier. Absolutely, and uh, I mean, I, I, for me, it was absolutely a, a psychological and maybe physical lifesaver uh, to open up the computer and find a new tanka uh, from Kartika and write. Okay, my, but that makes my day. Uh, <laughs> and, <they're>, um, <laughs> uh, and and that if that was so much more than an email from somebody saying, you know, how are you? I'm fine, or I'm not fine, or I'm uh, depressed, or, I'm, or I'm, I'm not, or I went for a walk. No, it, it, it was um, something calling for a really very specific kind of response. Of, of noted, you know, be, be there, be there. You, I think, have gone silent. Um, I, I, I wonder if you, it sounds, it seems to me that uh, I worked with the, the late Marvin Bell for about 10 years, uh, writing prose poems back and forth, and his penultimate email to me just before he passed away. And uh, um, Can you hear us now? You're yeah. frozen. Yeah, no, no, now we can hear you. So we actually, we we pretty much missed a lot of what you were saying uh, at the very end about the, the, the last thing we heard, Marilyn, was the joy of receiving the, uh, the email from uh, Kartika and, and knowing that that's what you would be working on. So were you saying and something after that? We and thank heavens we were doing 
doing it on Zoom. <laughs> um, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, okay, no, okay, you know, good old, uh, old fashioned reliable email. Yes, there it is. <laughs> I can print it out if I want and then write on exactly. it. Exactly. What, what what I was uh, was was starting to say was that uh, I, I had been writing for many years uh, uh, prose poems back and forth with Marvin Bell and his penultimate email to me before he passed away last December was that receiving a new we called them paras receiving a new para defines the immediate future and I I'm guessing that may have been the same experience that you had when you would find a new a, a new one from one or the other. Uh, yes, I mean, and what I'd begun saying before internet sort of gave up on us was that it was a space of extraordinary freedom um, to, to sort of uh, to convey, to decant the, the state of that day, whether it was, um, whether it was joy or pain or um, just this softness of which there is quite a it is well whether it's one own body or the state of the nation or the world were to the the the, um, the hand that Marilyn sent out or the thread that she was putting out there and you know to weave from that there's I, I, I'm this is a this is a, a an old-fashioned analogy but I'm guessing that may have been a bit what uh, the, the act of community quilting may have been like that's a lovely metaphor for this. Um, would you like to read some more from the book? Um, yes, and because I know Shuti is there and we're doing this with transnational, I'll just pop in with, um, you know, before we, we continue with the last bit, uh, with actually, because, you know, this is also a chronicle of the everyday and the wonders um, uh, that. 52. I'm going to read 52. So if you could read Shuchi and, and Mina Kandasami, with whom I did an event in the middle of the year at uh, Transna as part of the Transnational Literature Series. Unmasked interview on Crowdcast. Isle of brief joy, its sole borders, those carved by bo broadband access, land with no COVID contagion. When Mina and I speak to the US launch of her book, Cast Killings, Murderous Husbands, and more. Speak across Boston, London, and Paris with gracious Shuchi, host from Brookline Booksmith, to readers unseen around the world, 8th June, 2020. From around the world, Lebanese expats are flown back to Al Watan, Moscow, Rio, Montreal, Paris, bringing the virus to their homecomings in Beirut or the Beka. Numbers leap. Katya wrote to me a month ago, our epidemic's over. I know she follows the news. Cafes reopened, clothing shops, creches. As for the money changers, were their counters ever closed? 10th June, 2020. Okay. We will continue with November now, a little later. Uh, we were on 22nd November. Okay. Slogans, jokes went round the first time. Recipes for iftar solitaire photos of cassoulet or couscous, window framed landscapes of unconfined trees, Berge de la Seine, the Corniche, Riverside Park dogs. No one's clapping in windows this time. Winter is coming, 22nd November, 2020. This time, winter comes to Paris on stocking feet. No fuss, no fireworks until she's layering breath with frost and pipes with gnarls. In Verlaini, my parents greet their wedding anniversary by bracing their windows and ears for Cyclone Buravi, 3rd December, 2020. Um. 
ears attuned to sounds at three in the morning that are irrelevant. Techno car, wine shop delivery truck, <clears throat> the pulse in my ears. And sleep is over again, a visited city. Conversations stop with the dreams. Night continues with its noises. My silence. First December, 2020. The noise, the noise shreds all thought to silence. Inside the dazzling white drum, a cylindrical superconducting MR scanner, the radiographer corrects softly. I am mere atoms of water, each captained by protons of hydrogen hurtling earthward, mere mass of kilter, of drops rushing, lining, realigning between magnets and radio waves, between rhythm and discord. 12th December, 2020. Discordant darkness of curfew emptied streets. St. Lucy's day passed. Daylight will linger longer, but when will sidewalks refill with people <coughs> heading to movies, theater, dinner, ou que pour flâner? On a screen, I watched white robed girls crowned with candles singing Santa Lucia in another country, in another language, another year when voices wove anodyne in the air. They weave the air gold today, the voices that brought breath and heart this year. Namesake publisher at 4 a.m., then J and P all from Delhi, L ships snowflakes from Boston, Hondi and Seb red roses, berries and lint from Berlin. Philippe with chou à la crème lights up my landing. Chanka, two decades on, smiles as wishes by 10. The, you'd said, I know you know your love. More than ever, the 18th December, 2020. What I loved more than wine, pomegranate juice or cardamom coffee was conversations, her face, preferred language. Mine was also a sure, but mine was off a silver mane, imperious nose, imperious nose, grin, thought of coffees and curries, voices, pages, feed us now, 20 December, 2020. Your voice on the page, well, screens of laptop and cell phone, if precise, not poetic, we should be, feeds me thee with mirth, thought, joy, doubt, absurdity, much needed, through the galloping months of this fearsome time. Not everyone knows why I have eluded faces, Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, WhatsApp, whatever, whenever possible. Last night, last week, I lost my voice. Tears unspooled instead across video. 23rd December, 2020. We, we were on screen that whole time. Yeah, that's because um, mm -hmm. our connection's not good okay. when you're on screen. Can you still hear us, Christopher? I can indeed. That was really, really beautiful. And, and even the places where we lost you for a few lines uh, managed to turn the Ranga into a kind of erasure that uh, was poignant in its own way. Um, I know we're going to open it up to questions in a moment, but I did just want to uh, uh, point to uh, 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 Karthika's uh, poem on the 2nd of March, which begins, um, 
the COVID age, that may be the Anthropocene's gift to the planet. Uh, it strikes me that that's one of the more brilliant insights of our, of our moment, that we could even sort of celebrate uh, uh, what feels like, often feels like the end. Yeah, we all have our claim to fame. <laughs> this might be ours. Yeah. Uh, another question, uh, because of Maryland's time in Beirut, of course, uh, that explosion at the port finds its way into oh, the... Um, in, it's, into the it's in there, too. Yeah, it, it's it, it in is. the book, too. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, 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 it tracks uh, across it more than more than one of your one of your rengas. Um, but interestingly, uh, for, for uh, someone from our from this country, uh, January 6th is not there. And uh, I found that to be a kind of relief not to have to think about about that, that that I, that these two wonderful poets in Paris were taking us on an altogether different journey, which is why we like to read works in other languages and other tra and in translation. But were you conscious of that at the time that this was something to avoid or uh, that you just uh, had your eye on different things? I, 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 think, I, think I, I think I just had my eye on different things. Um, I think the wonderful <laughs> thing about, um, I mean, I say wonderful, but in terms of the experience of writing it was that there was a lot of spontaneity. You know, one, one wrote what was, preeminent in the mind that particular moment if that makes sense yeah and and of course that was brought on by whatever word you were choosing to uh, take from the last line in the writing of of your own right yeah which is the the, the really good thing about uh, uh the the the, 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 the about the rank of form and the idea of the rank of, on one hand was completely other than this a really lightweight I mean for me it's it, it, you you too I'm sure it seems you know lightweight syllabic uh, yes. uh, 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 um, uh, cons uh, constraint uh, um, but being but being given a direction and one can, and it could go anywhere you know Way, you know, uh, neither neither of us you know, pick, uh, you know, picked of or to or and you know, we, you know, we, 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 we uh, you know we pick we pick we pick substantives or verbs uh, and as I as, and um, sometimes as, uh, um, some, sometimes image, images were you know, were were echo too or there uh, there's more of an echo of, or, or a response to what the other person is saying and sometimes it's just uh, I'm going to take that word and walk walk around the block with it or a counterpoint sometimes <laughs> yeah uh, mask becomes unmasked in one uh, delicious transition um, I, I'm also thinking that the syllabic restraint was for both of you, uh, quite liberating in the sense that it allowed you to get to material that you might not have imagined was uh, front of mind uh, when you sat down to write that day. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah the, the, the constraints were, were altogether healthy. Yeah, I, 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 I agree, I, I, I agree. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't even think it would, I, it would have been possible to do this particular thing just uh, as a free verse collaboration, although that's a, uh, another, that, that, that is another kind of possibility and something that people have done extremely fruitfully. I think it was also the time. I mean, I think this was very good in that, I mean, it continues to be that particular moment, as you know, in many ways. But um, uh, like Marilyn, you said, uh, if it were in free verse, I suspect we would have ranted about um, you know, a plethora of things. <laughs> and this allowed us to focus on whatever was the essence of that day, that moment, that feeling. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a joyous thing. And so I wonder, have you continued now that the book is published? Are you still trading poems or even Ranga or something else? We continued for about a month oh, after good. what's in the book, and and then I'm afraid I went through a bad health patch, and I then I had deadlines, and um, you know Marilyn, as usual, was extremely responsive, 
uh, I, I noticed that my responses were getting a bit staccato, particularly because of hospital at that point. And, and then I had to you know, dive into stage work. We were, we'd finally resumed touring. And so I had to have other hats on. I, I, I have to say that I think by my count, there were three times you were able to get together during the writing, uh, uh, during this one year period. Uh, and each time seemed to, uh, it had a, a sense of liberation uh, at, at that, uh, after not seeing each other for so long. And uh, abso um, ab absolutely, uh, uh, especially the I think I I I think is uh, esp especially the reading that that, 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 that that was recorded at Shakespeare and Company, and then being able to go to a cafe and have respectively hot chocolate and and and, and coffee, and <laughs> like normal people in in normal life afterwards. <laughs> And, and the first of those three times, so was actually, you know, the, the meeting was um, propelled by the Ranga themselves because we'd been asked to do a recording. So that was that was a joyous, uh, you know, that was serendipity. Yeah, and, and I just note for the for the the audience that uh, uh, Marilyn mentions the hot chocolate, which appeared, I think, in two successive uh, poems. So it clearly it clearly had its its moment. Uh, Jessica Greenbaum asks, at wonders, what is it like writing alone after ranging? <laughs> can we adopt that as a verb? I think it's a, yeah. I, I, I think it's a perfect language. coinage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, um, I mean, I'll just speak for myself. Um, I haven't stopped writing together because, um, it, it, in a sense, I'm, I'm you know working on new stage performances, and so. Right now, I've spent two weeks writing with a composer. I mean, and and two two extraordinary um, singers. So I'm I'm responding in real time to the music they're making, changing the writing, which is an altogether different challenge. But the collaborative act hasn't hasn't at all ceased. Um, and and there's other writing happening as well, which is collaborative. Um, I, I tend to do both simultaneously. It's it's like occupying two different rooms uh, in a beloved house. And uh, uh, when I finally got out of Paris, but we're still in France, but uh, but uh, uh, to a friend who lives in the country, with, with, and uh, and that was at the end of April, uh, I began working on sonnet sequences again, uh, but um, have uh, also uh, just finished a collect. I mean, translation is of course another kind of collaboration, and I had in fact just finished a collection of, uh, of short poems by Venus Khorigata, the Lebanese Franco-Lebanese poet, um, for the poetry set for the. Uh, Poetry Translation Center in uh, uh, in London uh, that are public there uh, uh, that are uh, publishing a series of uh, um, they're bigger than chat books but um, uh, books of about forty or fifty pages so that was all right <laughs> uh, get that done and um, uh, and then going back to some translations for uh, an anthology of translations that uh, of, of the of poet and editor Sarah Riggs is, is putting together from the uh, Tamas series where they, they, they've had poets working on uh, readings and working on translations of, the, of each other's work from various languages for several years while well, this still was possible. And so she asked me for uh, translations of Rashida Madani for, who is, um, a, a Moroccan poet who writes in French, and that was easy. And I, 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 mean, I had several that were unpublished. And then of uh, uh, Julan Haji, who's the, the Syrian Kurdish poet who uh, writes in Arabic, and I had translated some of Julan's work, and I tried to work on something new, and that was a little less uh, uh, obvious, but it was certainly uh, uh, something to, more than something. I mean, something extremely worth doing. I'm you know, very, very glad to have done that. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to reading all these books. I wonder, Karthika, how has uh, writing for the stage, has, has lockdown changed your thinking about that in any way? Well, it was, we went through 20 months of isolation in, yeah. in, in terms of, you know, meeting in a studio, the, the production that I was actively working on uh, when lockdown mm -hmm. happened. Um, we couldn't get together for a very long time. So 
it was frustrating, um, soul deadening because uh, so much of what happens for stage, especially for dance, happens in real time. You're you know bouncing off each other. You're bouncing off movement primarily, um, and and all of it was being done in these you know in these hypothetical. We we were, we were projecting without knowing what those bodies in a defined space would be like. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. I wrote twelve iterations of one particular libretto because all of it was hypothetical, um, and <laughs> it, just the the sheer sort of headiness of being back in a rehearsal studio and seeing watching bodies move and watching bodies respond um is indescribable yeah yeah that's what i i would imagine yeah uh do you want to read a little bit more before we close out we're coming to the end of our time and might it would be good to hear hear some more of your words in the air last two clips last two clips okay, sure. yeah um, page 132. Yes, yeah. Um, just the, the last two poems in the book. Two hours before dawn, I give up on sleep, turn on the bedside lamp, pick up the book I put down at midnight, attempt escape to Algiers, another decade, history, someone's struggle who's not me, getting old in a quagmire city. Unfortunately, it was paradise, solitary confinement now, food shopping, the only vestige of human exchange, though daylight lingers, 29th March, 20, 2021. What lingers through day, month, and year will be kindness. Kindness that kept me sane and safe, yes, even with the same unsought trifecta snapping at my heels, noisy and unfunny, save during our chats, the scaffolding to laugh and weep as this, the theatre de l'absurde of our own grandly defective bodies. In this almanac of blessings, laughter became you, the, and somehow springtime. 31st March, 2021. Uh, what, a, what a lovely uh, way to end the book. And uh, uh, that, that transition uh, from linger to linger was particularly delicious. I see that Pierce has come on. And so yeah. I will thank Marilyn and Karthika for this really terrific reading and conversation. Yes, thank you. That last reading was stunning. Um, can the two of you try to get your video going again? I'd, I'd love to say goodbye to your faces. Uh, it, says, it says I can't because, um, because you, you as the host have, uh, have stopped it. Ah, hold on, let me. Yeah. I can ask to start video. Yeah, yes. yes. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Uh, okay. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you all so much for joining us. This has been beautiful. And even with the tech, it is just so special to have the two of you together, reading together, and to have you all the way from Paris speaking to us today. Thank you. Thank, well, thank you, you so thank, much. Thank, thank, yeah. thank, thank all of you so much. And uh, uh, we've got to thank, thank both of you so much and all of you as in the people who are, uh, uh, for making comments on the side, uh, uh, including reminding me of the, of the of the title of the of the Rabia Alamedine's novel, <laughs> and, um, uh, and thank you all, thank you for all all of you so much for being with us today. <laughs> thank you. We do have copies of the book at the store. This is a galley, but we have finished beautiful copies at the store. It comes out on Tuesday, so we've got them a little early if you want to sneak off to the bookstore and get your copy now. Thank you, everyone. This is our last event of the year. Um, so thank you to everyone. If it's your first event with us or one of many, we really treasure your, your time with us. Could, could I just say it's, it's wonderful to be back. It's almost exactly two years since I was there, but in person for yeah. the US launch of Until the Lions. And that was just such a, you know, 
special moment for me and to do this with Marilyn two years later and with Christopher, with whom I was writing when the pandemic you know, began. And then I went, I'm sorry, I went off with grid, but chemo was terrible, but I'll write you about that. Oh, and I have to say that as I was reading your book, when you mentioned Mina Kandasamy, who was in our program, and Mimi Kalvati shows up, who was also in our program, it felt to me a little bit like old home week, uh, as awful as this period has been, seeing two t- fabulous poets in conversation, bringing in the rest of the world was for me a, a real treat. So thank you. Thank you so thank much, you. Christopher. It's wonderful to be here. With you again, even on a, even on a screen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Inshallah, at some point we'll be able to see each other in person. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah, I will. I, I will. I, I will. I won't say next year in Tarabo. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. I'm gonna. Thank you. I'm gonna say bye now. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Have a wonderful Christmas and festive season. Yes. 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 Thank you, everyone. Bye, everything. Thank you so much for having me. Bye. Bye. Thanks.